Hello, everyone, and welcome to C-Suite Network Executive Briefings. I'm Greg Greenberg, General Manager for the C-Suite TV, and we're going to be joined by Chris Rabelais, co-founder of All Sports Market. So sports leagues can have the best of both worlds by embracing the concept of a sports stock market that will give them the revenue that they're seeking without creating a massive disconnect with their fans. The world of sports investing is one well worth consideration, and it's the future of fan engagement. Chris has spent nearly 20 years developing this sports stock market by bringing the all sports market into reality. He's also worked to help create and manage the New Sports Economy Institute and the C Suite Network Sports Investing Advisory Council. We're going to spend some time with Chris right now, and I'm going to come back a little bit for QA later. But for right now, take it away, Chris. Unmute yourself and rock and roll. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks for uh, joining this um, executive briefing. I want to give you a little bit of um, the origin story of all sports market and why, um, you know, the why behind the what and, and the how uh, we got here. So uh, my background is uh, computers. It's um, all my life. Um, I'm a computer nerd. I'm not a sports fan, which is going to surprise a lot of people. Um, so that's that's my whole history back to childhood. Uh, you know, PCs, I watched the whole um, computer industry literally develop right before my eyes. I actually, in college, used to program with punch cards. So that's how far back it goes. Um, so that that's my background, not sports, computers. And um, in the 1990s, I was um, a systems integrator. I had a systems integration company in Phoenix, Arizona. So we built uh, computer servers, where, you know, wired them up, put software uh, custom configurations. We were the first one in the in the valley to package up um, for offices, like the whole package. So that's my background. Um, I had a customer in Costa Rica that bought a lot of computers from me, and um, I got in, at the end of the 90s. I, I got really kind of bored with the systems integration business and and sold it. And the friend of mine that was a customer asked me if I'd like to go down there and help him start a sports book. And I didn't even know what a sports book was. I, to this day, I've never placed a bet on a game in my life. Um, I have no interest in that. But um, he wanted me to help him build a business, um, a sports book software business, because if you remember, in the late 1990s, that was the big boom in offshore sports gambling. Um, and that was the mecca of it. Uh, so I, I was right in the thick of that. And I saw... Um, I didn't really understand the business. I didn't understand the business model until I got really deep into it. And when I got deep into it, um, I realized that it was my job as a manager, director, and organizer of the teams to figure out basically how to cleverly trick people out of their money uh, using elaborate math formulas. And that's uh, that wasn't compatible with my <laughs> ethos, if you want to call it that. So um, that, that was the beginning of the end of that. And so um, I was in Costa Rica and I, I literally had a middle of the night uh, brain flash kind of thing. This was in 2000, um, yeah, 2000. I had a brain flash like, well, wait a minute. Okay, so people like, I was exposed and I think I wanna include some things I think um, will be useful for, for the audience and not just tell my tale, you know, talk my book as you say. Um, so, I, you know, what did I get from that? I got from that that the market was absolutely ravenous. I mean, people were willing to send incredibly ridiculous sums of money into the, basically a, an unregulated jurisdiction, no recovery, very little any laws of any sort. And but their passion was so high to put. Uh, you know, put their their knowledge to work in sports that they didn't care. So that was a real like, um, you know, that that was the hook for me that said, man, I had no idea that people were so crazy about this. And so I had done some day trading in the late 90s, um, you know, just playing around because that was really the first time that you could get a, a workstation on Wall Street kind of thing. You know, I trade station and those things. And it, it just came to my wall. You know, people like uh, to put money on sports. So, what if you? What is to stop you from creating a, a sports stock market mechanism, like the stock market, where people instead of gambling on sports, they can invest in sports teams. So that's the source of the idea, <laughs> and um, you know that was 20 years ago, uh, literally 1999. So, um, how to get there from here? Now, I 
you know, you always start with a lot of passion and fireworks and, and you generate a lot of excitement and, and that's what builds your team and all that. And, and we got the prototype, you know, origin story. We got the prototype up actually from Costa Rica. We got it working in 2000, um, beta was 2003, then 2004 um, live, 2005 was really going to town. And that's when I realized, okay, we're in Costa Rica. We built a sports stock market. It's big. It was growing faster than I could manage it, really. I mean, it was going out of control. And I knew like, well, this isn't going to, we're not going to be able to really make something out of this if we don't get to the legal side of it. I know these sports book guys don't care because they're down here in a place where nobody can get them. But that's not what I'm about here. So what do we do? So I started taking all of our resources and all of our efforts and putting it towards regulation, finding a path to put this into the into the financial system as a legitimate thing. So um, started uh, spending a lot of time and money on that in six and seven. And then the economy started getting wobbly. And I remember about mid 2007, I started getting reports from my friends that I was down in Costa Rica, my friends here in the States, talking about how the mortgage, the mortgage market was working. That um, one example is a friend of mine said that their brother got out of prison and, and had three houses that he, he had mortgages on three houses because he was able to get them um, just by signing his name. And this was in Phoenix. And I'm like, oh, oh, that's something terrible is going to happen. So I, I started trying to basically race to get this thing out to the market <laughs> before the economy crashed. We did, um, we did hire um, reg, uh, very high level people in, the, in economics and, and the law in DC to help us navigate that. And what ended up happening is we built a parallel product called the Sports Risk Index, which they said, we looked at your ASM thing, we can't give you any confidence on, on the legal side um, in terms of not, the problem there was that you're, you run the risk of being attacked by the Justice Department as a gambling outfit. They couldn't give us any legal clarity on that part of it. So they said, well, you really need to wind that down or, or try to at least block the U.S. customers off for now because we're not sure. Let's build a parallel product and that will be okay. So we hired the former chair of the CFTC. Um, that was our relevant regulator, at least we thought at the time. Um, and then uh, we hired the gentleman who wrote the code. Uh, the Commodities, Commodities Futures Modernization Act of 2000, we hired him as our lawyer. So we, uh, we put together the product and we got a listing agreement with an exchange. And um, we were literally going through the countdown sequence to start up in, in November, Dece November, October, November, December of 2008. And in December of 2008, I know everybody remembers this, um, the economy completely imploded. And my partner, that was to list our contract was um, United States Futures Exchange, which was part of Man Financial or MF Global. They imploded, um, they, they were a startup. MF Global pulled the plug on them because they had exposure, believe it or not, to Madoff, uh, MF Global did. So the whole thing, that was my only deal. I, I took all the interest, um, everything was pushing towards that, the economy imploded. And, and that was um, the beginning of a five-year, what I would call walk through the wilderness um, from 2009 through 2014. So um, that's a whole nother story. I don't want to get into that here, but um, I would say that, you know, what did I learn from that? Um, you know, get back to the core principles. If you really have something, and, you know, the core principle for us was that, um, People want to speculate somehow on their sports knowledge. That, that was the, the key learning from, from my experience in Costa Rica and all. That was the key learning from that. So I was confident that, that that's not going to change and that the only mechanism they have is, uh, is gambling and betting. And so that's the, only, that's the reason. The reason they don't invest in sports teams is because they can't. So if that bridge is crossed, then, then there's going to be, there's a pro, there's a future there. And that's what I hung on to for five years. Um, and I, the very, you know, when the crash happened, another key learning, um, <laughs> things are going to happen when the crash happens that you never imagined. Okay. People that you thought were your friends will turn into your enemies. People that you thought were your enemies will turn into your friends. People will show up that you didn't even know were watching and other people, most people will run for the hills. That's what they will do. They'll flee. 
So don't expect to be um, all the people that were around you, rah, 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 uh, you know, when the crap hits the fan, for lack of any other way to put it. Uh, don't expect those people, to, the, that group to be there. So you better uh, buckle down and make sure you have something that you truly believe in because you're going to be tested on it. I guarantee it. So, all right. Yeah. So I'm going to jump in here. Enough. I know that's that's fantastic as to you know the, the history you went through and the struggle you went through. So uh, I'm just going to jump in here for a quick question and then I want to find out. So you learned you learned all that information. You learned that about yourself and you came out the other side. So where is the business now? And then if you could just get into, you know, you talked about speculation. So you can speculate in sto in stocks and you can also speculate in sports now. So if you wouldn't mind just talking a little bit where the business is now and the difference b between. Um, like uh, speculating in stocks and speculating on sports and because now you can go to like uh, uh, FanDuel and and a lot of different other sports betting sites so bring us up to date okay so um, where it stands now is uh, we rebuilt the platform we, we formed a nonprofit in 2011 um, and the the core idea of that there were always two parts to this idea um, build an asset class around sports and then um, build an educational system around that asset class. So um, the, the, that's the main, so there's, there's a for-profit entity being built and there's a non-profit entity active now. The only thing that's active now is the non-profit because the market is still running uh, in a, basically a, an extended beta mode right now. So the market lives on a nonprofit structure. We started it up in 2014, so it's been five years now. And we've been using that to refine the data, you know, get the data sets built to build the case for regulation, to build partnerships, to show people how it works. Um, so, so, okay, so that, there's two parts, nonprofit, for-profit. So on the nonprofit side, um, we have a, a number of major schools. I, I'm, we're just about ready to release a um, fall course on uh, learning finance through sports with a, a, a major college. I think there's a couple of them now, but they've asked me not to, to put that out until it's totally done and it's wrappers, you know, the wrappers done and it's ready to be presented to the public. So there is a formalized, this is what I think is important. There's a formalized educational system being built around the idea of learning finance by learning how to trade sports teams on uh, on our stock market. Now, we're not out to say there's no other way to make a sports stock market. We are just the only one that's ever been proven to work. So I wanna make that very clear. It's not about saying this is the only way. But so that's where that is. And then on the for-profit side, um, we, have, uh, we have one um, league, it's the National Roller Hockey League. Uh, it's a start. It's it's a it's kind of a long-term startup. If you look at the history of trying to start up start sports leagues, it's really tough. Um, we have one confirmed in hand sent to the SEC, um, kind of as a co-signed letter saying they wanna they wanna raise money on our platform. They wanna use our platform. So that's our order book. We have one order in the queue, and we have one. I found out last night on our conference call we have one order on deck basically. So we've accomplished getting the, the market back up, um, showing that it works, getting quite a bit of attention on it, uh, starting to form some really important partnerships. And we have an order and we have an order in the, in the queue. Um, so that's where we, we are in answer to that, that question. Okay. And so where do you see all this heading? You know, you've, you've been through the bad times, you've reestablished, the, you've reestablished everything. And I also want to uh, open up the, uh, the lines out. If you have questions about, uh, about sports betting, about sports investing, you can put them in right now and then I'll read them out to Chris. But I want, I, what, where do you think this business is going to be in five years, 10 years? Because you've certainly stuck with it for a while. So where's, where's this all heading? Because you, you've, you clearly had, had, had the long-term view all the way throughout. Yeah. So, um, I, I will speak first to the mission, um, and then I, and I'll try to then put some um, specifics around the parameters, like what do I think will happen in a measurable way. So I think it's important that the mission and vision of it is 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 first. So we see that, um, and I'm still building the economic model on this, but we we believe that if you basically securitize uh, sports by creating an asset class around sports that it becomes a brand new wealth creator. The, the thesis is 
that um, the value that the public is accessing now in sports through gambling is kind of poaching. So if you, instead of you know, doing that, creating a, an actual uh, legitimate asset market around sports, will create an ecosystem around sports, will, which will become a job creation engine, which will become a poverty reducer, all of that. It, it's, 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 there's very much a social aspect of this beyond just the pure commercial side of it. So sports is an asset class, is a poverty reducer job creator. Um, that's what that's our thesis. Okay, so um, that and then I, I mean the educational side. So create an asset class around sports and then teach people trying. We already know this from data that we have that people are so engaged by trying to make profits in the you know in in markets obviously that they, they learn very, very uh, complex financial concepts through their natural passions and desires to, uh, to understand how to do that. So it becomes, instead of trying to you know, whiteboard out, um, you know, sit down and learn this math problem, you don't have to do that. They will, they will do it on their own. You just need to make sure that the tools are there so that they can expand their knowledge. So the idea there is, not to yes of course it's going to increase trade but there is that i'm not going to deny that but the other side of it is that they will um understand finance better and as a result of understanding finance better they will make better decisions in their uh in their lives that's you know in everything credit cards bank loans you know all of that stuff their financial knowledge will improve naturally and then that will force accountability on the financial system in a new way and that will make things better so that's, that's the big picture. And then finally, I, I just, this is, uh, I want to ask you about the rise of esports. you know, because everyone talks about traditional sports teams. Nowadays, you know, I see kids around here, they're not that even interested in, in traditional sports. They like playing video games. Uh, so this will be my last question. Once again, if you have a question, you can just put it up there on the site. Uh, but I want to get your view is if the future is also going to be with regard to kids playing Fortnite in, in stadiums because I don't understand it, but you know, that's the future to some of these kids. Yeah. Um, I think it's unhealthy. I mean, if you're asking me personally, um, I think we have a problem here on, on multiple levels. Uh, the, there, there is an addiction element to these video games. Um, and there's of course an addiction uh, element to gambling. So I think it's kind of a, uh, there's a double, double whammy there. Um, I don't have any answer for it. It's very much an emerging thing. Um, maybe, you know, maybe we can capture some of that interest and put it into some useful form, but it's, you know, that, that market is enormous and there's already been a scandal um, about it, <laughs> an esports betting scandal just uh, three, four days ago. So um, yeah, I don't have any fully formed opinions about that because it really is, it's other than just video games are addictive and uh, gambling's addictive. All right, so uh, if you don't mind, just give us one big sum up. If you're, if you're looking for something or you're looking for people to invest or to reach out to you, why don't you tell people how they can find you? But this has been fantastic. We've had a great crowd out today and it's really been an interesting story. Thanks a lot for sharing with us. So why don't you take it away and I'm gonna thank everyone for coming on and seeing us. Yeah, um, just uh, go to allsportsmarket.com, sign up for a free account. And, uh, you know, learn, you know, just play around with it. That's, that's really the main thing. Uh, we, we need um, people talking about it. We need people looking at it. Just sign up and, and trade on them. You don't have to pay anything. Just play with it and uh, tell, us, tell us what you think about it. All right. So once again, if you're interested in learning more about sports investing or the all sports market, check out the C-Suite Network Sports Investing Advisory Council. Just Google it if you need to find it or, or you can email myself or you can email Chris. Either way, thanks a lot, Chris. And thanks a lot, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody.